Well, yesterday, Sri Lanka celebrated, well, uh, actually, somberly remembered would be a better way of saying it, our independence from the British Empire. It has been 75 years since we lived on our own, governed by our own, and led by our own. And by the end of 75 years, by our own, we brought our country to the ground. How much ever we try to whitewash it, that is the sad truth. But the good news is, now there's no way but up. So the president, while addressing the nation yesterday, was hopeful. Nita Aurdu Hatta Pahakata Kalin, Lanka Aurdu Nidasa Labunu Avastavi, Kirtimat London Times Puatpate, Katuaki, Mese Sandha Nuna, Lanka Aurdu Nudure Dima, Peradiga Switzerland, Bauta, Patwe Nudakima, Ape Apeksha Vaikiela, Venat Kisidu Peradiga Ratak Pilibanda, own Eveni Apekshavak, Etikaragate Nehe, Et Vartamane, Apata Siduiate Kumakda, Adap Itiase Metak Novu, Viru Devent, Arthic Arbu Decata, Muna de Minine, Mat Itiase, Meveni Barapatala Tatwekata, Apa Muna Dila Ne, Apata Eveni Tatwek Udavuni Ai, Me Tatweta Vagakian None Kauda, Api Atta Katagarmu, Me Tatweta. Apicilu de nam, adue divashen, vaga kiva yuti, rate artike, dinendina, kada vetenta patangata. Api desha pan la porundu, itu kirima sandha, satan part of a link kiu de, sanata kirima sandhat, vadi vadi ed, nayagata. Api vadi vadi ed, nayagate, pari boja inter misa, avijan de noe. Namut budun vadale, nayagate ute, avijan inter misa, pari boja, noe kiel. Api bauda kamagana kataka and nagabang. Budun Vadala Dharma at Pitingia. Singapore, Godanagan Hati, Iganaganta, Lanka, Tapu, Lee Kuan Yu, Audu Gananaka Pasu, Mena Mehemakino. Obey Ratata, Me Tatwe Atune, Anava Shelesa Desha Panta, Multana Demonisai. Obey Rata Adar Sheta Gatanam, at the Singapore Rat Vinasai. At that time, Apidan Vinashe Kara with Tieni. Ma Utsa Gane, Matupitin Penena. Rogi Tatweta Vedana Nashaka Denta Noi Roga Nidane at Piliam Kirimatai E Asirui Duskarai Namut Apayayu to Ekama Margei Janadi Pati Dureta Patu Da Patan Mata Ganta Sidu Nati Indu Bohomeak Jana Priati Indu Nona Baba Mamadana Namute Tindu Nisa Ada Mera Te Kisima Puravasiku Telpoli Mwala Vijalane Miyayan Nene Gas Nomativa Badagin Nene Pohoro nevatiwa shapa karan ni ne. Eni sa araji ka vadi deshapan balavegan kavara baadha ka nirmane karat mama me ratat adere karn. Bahutar jana tav samag ekwi me nav pratisans karn vedasatan idiriya ta gene ano. Samay sanghidya peradari karge na ekamutwa salasum saaga tu idiriya ta gud apata deda satali sataveddi sangwardi ta rajyak baata patwe na pulwa. Loke Venat Kisudu Rataka Atapani Nati Dunu Ratak Bavata Patwenna Pulwang. Sabah Nidasa Udakaragana Pulwang. Now one of the key things that was mentioned uh, during the president's speech was the debt this nation has. And that got me thinking. Who has the highest number of external debt in the world? Surely it must be a country from Africa, right? Like Congo or Gabon. Or surely a country from South America, like Venezuela. Or perhaps Argentina, because, you know, the IMF had to go save Argentina. Actually, correction, kill Argentina. Or it could be us, Sri Lanka. After all, every politician who is in the opposition, especially Dr. Harsha De Silva, loves to use these buzzwords, Chinese debt, Mahinda's debt, Rajapaksa debt. So maybe it's us. My curiosity got me to Google search with country, uh, which country has the highest number of external debt. Instead of telling who, who it is, let me just play the Google search for you so you can see who has the highest external debt in the world. Drum roll, please. Oh, wait, Japan? Now, this is according to data from the IMF, the Colombo Liberals trusted lending agency that puts countries back on track. So according to the list by the IMF that has calculated national external debt, they say that Japan has the highest debt to GDP in the world. 
According to data online, Japan's debt is around $4.1 trillion. But hang on, isn't Japan a wealthy nation? Considered to be a wealthy country? So how come they have so much debt? Also, very curious to know, where is Sri Lanka? Wait, right below the United States of America? This does not make sense. How come our external debt is just below the U.S.? According to uh, information uh, online, uh, U.S. debt was around $24 trillion in 2022. And ours is closer to $60 billion. Yet the U.S. is considered to be a very wealthy nation and Sri Lanka a bankrupt one. Well, when you dive deep into this, you will find how they changed the narrative to mislead you and give you a fake narrative that will break your spirit and keep us in the beggar state mentality. All this nonsense we've heard from, especially from the opposition party members and the dumbest level of intelligent group that exists in the universe, the Colombo liberals and their abysmal Twitter lecturing, is that when you have debt, it's the worst thing. But the truth is that every single country has debt. The ones that are very successful have an exuberant amount of debt. So when the story of having a high debt is bad, is false, as just like the promises made by a certain economic doctor from a Colombo think tank. We have to ask then this obvious question, okay? Why do countries like Japan, the US, the Switzerland, have such a large number of external debt and yet are successful? but countries like Sri Lanka, Maldives and Bhutan not. Then you will find that it's not about the debt, it's about trade. These successful countries have very successful trade businesses around the world. They target to export every item they can find in order to gain a profit from the world. Their import-export trade balance is healthy and they are working to keep it at that high levels. This is the lesson we need to learn. It's not Sri Lanka's debt that has got us down. It's our failure to create a market that's w that would push our products to the world, hence milk in the dollars we require to strengthen our economy. If you and I want to turn this around, we have to stop thinking like beggars. We have to stop thinking like a nation um, who, ha who only su uh, survives through handouts. We have to stop thinking like the politicians who got us to this point. There are many avenues we can think of, but we are still stuck in this mentality that we need the IMF. And without the IMF, we are doomed. The day that you and I realize that Sri Lanka could make it without organizations like the IMF, for sure, a role an organization that failed for 16 times will not get it the 17th time, right? That's logic. Perhaps that might be the lesson we need to learn after 75 years of our own governance. We'll be right back.